almost released a video to her. I was gonna, I thought I was gonna brag on some things. I thought I was gonna brag on kind of professional fishing. Well, I wasn't gonna brag on them. I was gonna kind of brag on, on us. Kind of the group, kind of this other group. The group that's like, fishes team events, you know, fishes some Toyotas, uh, fishes maybe the BFL, fishes just like, I was kind of thinking not like the good old boys, but just, just that group that just goes out there and fishes, and fishes tournaments. The reason I was gonna brag on it was because we've been fishing all year. I really hadn't heard anything. I think everything, I, what I mean by that is I hadn't, I hadn't heard, I heard some drama about, you know, poaching other people's holes and stuff like that. That always goes on, right? And, and you're never going to, well, there's a way to, to prevent that. That's, that's a lot of drama and stuff like that. But I will say this. I thought I was going to be, I saw some stuff that's been kind of going on in the professional ranks. What bothered me about what I was seeing what was going on in the professional ranks, I think bad things are always going to happen. I think things are always going to be done wrong by certain people. I think there's always going to be bad actions. What really frustrates me is not the bad actions, because that's just going to happen. It's the support of bad actions. It's the other people involved that, that look at it and go, yeah, I don't see anything he did wrong. And then I'm going, oh, okay, well, wait, wait a minute. It's not just one person doing bad. It's one person doing bad, other people looking at it, knowing it's wrong, everyone telling them it's wrong, and then they still support it. Or they're like, well, you know, I don't know. Well, it's, is it that bad? What's this going to lead to if we start if we start enforcing this? What do you mean, what's it going to lead to? Stop doing stupid stuff. Stop doing dumb things on the water. That's what it's going to lead to. That's what I'm hoping it leads to. You know, Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley back in the day said, I'm not a role model. I don't disagree with him. I don't want, I like Charles. Man, I think Charles is awesome, right? I think he's funny as can be. Um, no, I don't want, I hope, I hope my kids don't think Charles Barkley is a role model. Not, not for anything Charles Barkley has done wrong. Just for my kids, I hope I'm the role model, right? I hope, I hope they look after what I do, not some random person they've never met before. However, I think the NBA as a whole, right? If you're looking and you're the top level, I think you have some things to do to make sure that like, that's the way to do it right like that's you, you should be you should be the highest level and they should be like yeah we should try to emulate that regardless of bass fishermen and professionals whether they want it or not we should be looking at the top leagues and going hey man that's the way that's the way it should be run if something's done wrong in those leagues right if someone does something wrong and it's in the rules and it's shown that they did something wrong something should happen to them I don't care that you feel a certain way about it that's the way we all think. Well, wait a minute. That's the way I think. I think a lot of us think that way. So I was going to brag on the fact that I thought maybe here lately, down here, the lower levels sometimes seem like we're doing things better. But then this happens. And here's the problem. I can't really get mad at the organization. Heck, I can't even get mad at anyone in there except the person doing it because I don't know. I don't know how to fix this one. So let's set the stage for this. Brandon Belt Tournament on Cedar Creek. I did not turn these people in. No one turned these people in. They should have been. I don't really know what we were supposed to do about it. We had really bad wins. They don't want to cancel. I'm making this video as they canceled uh, the first day on Harris Chain because, because of bad wins. They didn't want to cancel the event. I don't think they should have canceled the event. They just made it a trailer tournament. That's what's kind of cool now, is that people don't mind having trailer tournaments. Now, there are some issues with trailer tournaments, and I might talk to those guys and say, hey, I, th this is, maybe we need to tw like tweak it a little bit. And maybe we need to tweak it because I don't think, safety, yes, um, I don't know. But just Let's just talk about it. We don't have to tweak it, let's just talk about maybe 
maybe there's something else we can figure out. Maybe get en enough people around with someone has a really good idea. I think I have a really good idea. Is it perfect? No, but I have a good idea about how a trailer tournament should work with the way they were trying to do it. Like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just think, like, I think we can still tweak it. Our rules were this. We were allowed to leave a public boat ramp at 635. So we actually had a private boat ramp that we where we were staying at. Like well, literally it was in between two houses. So we didn't put it in there. We could have put in there and then we could have drove our boat to a public boat ramp that morning in the dark and then left with everyone else. Because it was kind of a shotgun start, but it was kind of a shotgun start from a bunch of different public boat ramps. But you could get there either by putting in at the public boat ramp or by loading at a private boat ramp and then going there. Okay. But we were like, man, it's blowing real bad. I didn't feel like driving four or five, six miles in the dark. I'm like, let's eh, just, just put in there. It's easy enough. So we put in there. Put in there with like, I don't know, 30 other other teams. I'm guessing 30. So we all sat there at the boat ramp till 6.35. Now, 6.35 was kind of dark. I didn't, it was, I think it was too dark. I think, I think having a shotgun start at 6.35 was probably, probably not the safest thing all trying to leave a boat ramp. And I think there's a little bit of like, a little bit of, I would say, not unfair. I don't even know why I'm getting into this, but like, it, like there's obviously gonna be people in front of other people and there's gonna be boat numbers that should be in front of others. And how do you really, you can't just have 30 people lined up in a row. Either way, that's what happened. But it is dark outside and I will show you in the video. It's at nighttime, it's dark it's early in the morning, but we're gonna talk about it. So stay tuned. So I know it's dark outside, but real quick, look to your right. You'll see one light moving. It's getting really close to that bright light. I'm showing y'all where the bridge is, how close it is. So this is a car driving over the bridge, just for reference. So you can see, that's how close we are to this bridge. We're almost right underneath it. I'm just putting that in there since it's so dark to show you that, that we're close, but we're not underneath it. So we still have to get to that bridge, if that makes sense. So here we are closer to what's going on, like to the start of 635. So you can start hearing everyone like start their engines. So we're just talking about like how people are creeping and you know, like there's people further away than others and all kinds of sort, sort of stuff. but. So I want you to watch it, and then it's gonna. I'm gonna replay it and show y'all really what to look for. Everyone's going a lot faster today, for sure. Or they get way on out there, but everyone's cruising now more than. I guess we go with them. I guess this is considered. Well, I guess this is considered leaving. I'm also talking about the guys that are way further away than some of the other people. I'm just. I'm just stating that I don't really like this shotgun start. I'll be honest with you. Those guys are running. So he should be DQ'd, right? No. And right where that arrow is. See how that guy's going way faster than everyone else? Yeah, that's because no one else has gotten on pad because they can't because the bridge is right there. I, I don't know where he went after this because there's the bridge in the way and there's a bunch of other people in the way and lights. But yeah, it was clear as day. He ran the bridge. We saw him running right underneath the bridge. And it really made me mad. I'm not gonna lie. see it's dark we all put in there maybe I can show you another video during the daylight of what the bridge looks like now on Cedar Creek we're not allowed to run those bridges I can't remember if there's a no wake uh, sign on that bridge regardless no one's ever run the bridge you're not allowed to run the I'm, some people might run the bridge but ever since I've been ever, over there you're not allowed to run it you can get a ticket for running it uh, and either way you should probably know that. Now, if you didn't know that, 
the tournament organization did a very good job because they sent us an email. They sent us an email about all kinds of, I get emails from them constantly. They sent us the email about what boat number we are, all kinds of things. They also sent us an email. That we were not allowed to run the bridges. Bridges are a no-wake zone. You have to idle them. So right off the bat, that morning, and you're going to have to look really closely, but you can hear me and Russell talk about it. I know I wasn't the only one. As soon as 635 hit, we all started taking off, and you see one guy take off on pad, and you can see he never slowed down. And he ran right through the bridge in the dark, mind you, but in front of everyone else and took off. Now, what were you we supposed to do? I, I guess I could have. Now, I was in the back of the pack because I wasn't in this like great hurry. I've been in one of these shotgun starts at, um, where were we, Ray Roberts? And it was the one of the scariest things I've ever been a part of. Anyone that knows can, will comment on that. If y'all remember that TXTT, that shotgun start that day out of where we, we were at a Jordan boat ramp, y'all know what happened. It was, it, it was one of the most unsafe things I've ever been a part of. And anyone that was there will comment on there and say, yes, that was, that was horrible. So anyways, I was, I was like, man, I, that was a, at least a little bit earlier morning where you could see, I wasn't trusting this stuff. I wasn't trusting these guys. Sorry. But anyways, just because of that reason. So he runs it. Well, now he's ahead of everyone else by a lot. And he broke a rule, but here's the deal. I don't know who he was. It's pitch black outside. I couldn't, I couldn't tell. I don't know if anyone knows who he was. I could have, I guess, tried to follow him and go after him and find out and protested him. I don't know if I could have caught him. I don't know, because I would have had to get through everyone. I, I, I still was going to have to idle the bridge. And I don't know where, you know, maybe I could have still seen him in, in, in the dark. I don't know how fast he was going. I, what do you do on that? We all believe that there's breaking a rule and cheating. Now, I think those things can carry over. Now, if you're in the middle of the daytime and you and you run that bridge, right? You break a rule. You didn't know it. Because there's, and, and I don't want to hear all these guys sit there and go, you need to know the rules on every single lake you ever go to or every single state. It's got every single person I've ever talked to that's traveled, we will all tell you the same thing. It's impossible to know those things. Breaking a rule unintentionally can happen to all of us. Okay, there are, all the lakes I've been to, there are some crazy, crazy off-limit things that are never marked. I've talked about this, like going to St. Clair, the Indian Reservation, knowing there's lines. I mean, pro, like professionals have broken this rule about no culling. I mean, all, guys, it's it's very difficult. I've been to Kentucky Lake, and there's state lines through the middle of the lakes, and you kind of have to know exactly. I mean, it's hard. So I, it can happen to all of us. I'm just saying, it can happen to all of us in an unintentional rule break, right? Now, you might get DQ'd for the day, right? But that's not cheating. It's just, it's, it's an unintentional rule break. In most of those rule breaks, there's no advantage. You didn't gain any advantage. Like, I, I'm a big believer, like, you, you running or doing something, I, I can't think. If you un don't zip up your life jacket, like, you... you you start your motor and the guy, your partner doesn't have his life jacket zipped up and you're just sitting there not moving. That's not a, an advantage for you to do good in a tournament, right? It was a five second mishap, whatever. That, I don't even think about stuff like that. That's, that's not even in my, my mind. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I, I think, now don't get me wrong. I mean, I try to follow all those rules, but I try to follow them just because I'm always nervous about, you know, getting DQ'd for something stupid like that. But... I do think that a rule violation is totally separate from cheating. Cheating it to me is intentionally doing something, knowing you're doing it to gain the advantage. Okay? Now, running that bridge in the dark. Did he know he was supposed to run the bridge? Probably not. There was plenty of rules that said he wasn't. However, did he cheat? I don't I don't know, but here's the deal. He totally gained the an advantage over everyone else there like a giant advantage because now he gets to go to a spot or do whatever first he was going to beat everyone because he did this it's a giant advantage huge huge there there were spots on that lake 
that like you can catch giant bags off of. It happened in the event. Guys were able to get to a spot first and they made top threes. So it's a giant advantage. Um, did he intentionally do it? He intentionally ran the bridge. I think he, he should have known better. Regardless of all that, we couldn't do anything about it. We finished 17th in the event. They paid 16. I have no idea if this guy got a check. Right? Um, there were some other things in the event, too, that that uh, that I heard from. I, I can't sit there and say it happened, and I don't know who it was. But there were some off-limits around the dam, and I heard multiple people talk about that there were some people that went inside those off-limits and, and fished. I don't know why those guys didn't get turned in if that happened. I... I am a little upset that guys aren't aren't doing anything about that. That they're not like, hey, there's buoys there, it says no boats, and people are going inside those buoys and fishing. I don't know why people don't do anything about that. And like, it's in the middle of the daytime. Turn them in, right? That's an advantage. Someone said they saw them catch fish. And someone was like, hey man, there's a good chance you didn't get a check because of that. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But I was, like I said, I was gonna brag on some of our guys. And then next thing you know, this happens. I can't brag on us. What were we supposed to do about this nighttime event? You know, what were we supposed to do about this thing that happened in the dark? I have no idea. I can't, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I, that's why I didn't even bring it up to the tournament director. He did everything he was supposed to do. He put out a memo, not a memo, he put it on an email. We weren't allowed to run the bridges. I can't help it if that guy didn't read it. What were we supposed to do about this thing that happened in the dark? I have no idea. I can't, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I, that's why I didn't even bring it up to the tournament director. He did everything he was supposed to do. He put out a memo, not a memo, he put it on an email. We weren't allowed to run the bridges. I can't help it if that guy didn't read that. It was an email. We get our boat numbers from that same email. Luckily, I didn't put out that video and I have to eat my words. Uh, that's the last time I'm going to try to brag about us about us guys out here fishing the lower levels trying to do the right thing and trying to fish good and and you know just just go out there and compete and, and beat everyone i thought that's all we were trying to do is is compete with some integrity try to beat each other not like how can i like do something to gain a little advantage and things like that i i heard stuff about you know if you ain't cheating you ain't trying now there's a thing out there that like hey that's good defense <laughs> I've never even. What do you mean defense? I'm not playing a sport. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not out there going. Well, if I can't catch them, I'm not going to make you not catch them. I mean, there. That's not what. Man, I don't. I've never even thought about stuff like this. This is. That's why I was. I was really shocked when I hear some of these things that some of these pros are saying. I'm just going. And sometimes they. I, I called a couple of them up about this stuff. It's in. And I got I got freaking pretty mouthy with them. I, I ain't gonna lie, because I was like, well, y'all maybe been in this competitive game. I've been in the competitive game a long time. I was just like, man, I I never thought if a guy goes out there and catches thirty pounds, my mentality was never. Well, my mentality was always like, how do I go catch thirty one to beat you? I never thought, is there a way I can do something? To prevent you from catching 30, you know, you can only catch 25, and now I have a better chance of beating you. <laughs> I never thought that. I didn't know, I I don't know why I didn't think people didn't think that way. I just never thought about it. Like, why would I? That just, that never even entered. I'm like, man, I got to do better. I got to catch them even better. It's just amazing to me. But here it is. Here's my video. Tell me what y'all think. See y'all.